In this video, I've come up to Lockhart and I'm on a quest. I'm trying to find the cave which has an association with the historical figure Rob Roy McGregor. Now, I have been here before, but it was more than 20 years ago. And if I'm brutally honest, I'm not entirely sure I remember where it is. So uh, come with me now as we explore part of the Lockhart Forest and have a look for the cave. And while we're at it, we'll try and take some photographs of the forest itself and perhaps maybe even the loch. Okay, so here we are. This is my... I hope my microphone's picking up the deer. That's incredible. Anyway, so this is my first composition. I've basically I've focused on these grasses here in the foreground and it's a square crop so sort of from about here to about here and I kind of like that you've got the, the edge of the walk running through the centre of the frame the trees and their reflections are forming a symmetrical pattern and then that pattern is being broken up by that little clump of grass and the lower right of the shot. Okay, right, I've taken that first shot with the square crop where we've got the, the grasses off to the, the lower. Been heckled by a duck and drowned out by a plane. The shot was the grasses with the reflection beyond. The rain's gone off now and so the loch surface is calmed again. We're now getting better reflections and it looks as though we're starting to get some some better light as well on the trees in the background. So there's a duck just swam through the shot though so that's broke up the uh, reflection a little bit. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to see if that will calm down. And like, yeah look we're getting some light down on that side of the loch as well now. So some beautiful reflections there which again might work with a square crop. quite keen as well to do something with these grasses here. I need to get a bit closer I think because I want to get a degree of separation between the front grass and then I want a gap and then the rest of them and from where I am just now they kind of merge into one but I think if I can get a little bit higher up something like that or get a little bit closer and get a line of separation there and then we've got a nice square crop there. I particularly like those little grasses at the end which are kind of away from the, the rest of the group so I might try and make them kind of central to the shot and yeah look we're starting to get some nice light on the trees here and actually on that side as well <laughs> so I'm having to work quite quickly here this is beautiful look at that down there Right, I'm going to grab a couple of shots. Thank you. 
Okay, this is the shot I've got set up looking down the loch. Again, it's going to be a square crop. I'm going to just include a little part of this near shore. The grasses in the front are pretty much front and centre. That's the main foreground interest. And we've kind of lost it now, but there was some lovely light on these trees up here. So I was working with that. As I said, I'll probably have the crop from about there, so you can just get a little hint of the side of the, the loch. And then however far in it goes, probably about there, wouldn't it? For the, the square crop. But I like that. Again, a nice subtle muted colours kind of a shot. I mentioned in a previous video that when I'm out doing woodland photography what I'm primarily looking for are contrast, you know, something that stands out. Usually it's a, a light and dark kind of thing but occasionally it can be colour and some of these ferns are on the turn and that gives you a great opportunity to find some colour contrasts. Right, what do you make of this? This is the kind of colour contrast I was talking about. You've got these uh, leaves which are turning red and they're standing out against the otherwise uh, entirely green background. I've framed the shot up so that the leaves are just below this kind of dark area. And uh, again, it's going to be a tight a square crop. I'm going to include this dark area because I think it helps frame the main subject which is going to be the leaves. I may actually shoot, uh, crop it so that the leaves are slightly off to the right because I think that gives a bit more balance. But again, a square crop. What I've done on this particular occasion is I've opened the aperture up to as wide as it'll go, which on this lens is f4. And the obvious reason for that is I want to get as shallow a depth of field as I can. So f4 and that's given me an exposure of 1 30th of a second at 100 ISO. Two things, three things really, caught my eye. The first, the obvious thing, the path leading down the hill. Um, this tree in the background here was just catching a little bit of light and you've got this little splash of yellow here in the foreground as well. And then to top it all off. <laughs> anyway, to top it all off, we've got this little orangey fern in the foreground. Um, fairly straightforward shot. I'm shooting at 100 ISO. Um, F18 and uh, that's given me an exposure of about a second. What I've done is I've focused on the foreground and I think that should give me plenty of depth of field because I'm shooting F18 but I've taken a second shot where I've focused on the tree in the background and hopefully Again, a nice square crop, probably from about here to just this side of the film. And uh, again, a little bit of post-processing to darken down the areas which aren't really contributing to the, the image. And uh, yeah, I think that's got a wee bit of potential. Now, that's a much better composition, isn't it? I just moved 
a little bit further down and suddenly the path has got an S-bend disappearing up into a little splash of colour beyond. This tree here in the foreground is the tree that I had in the distant background in the earlier shot and conveniently we've got some ferns again on the right of the frame. My problem is if I go too far to the right to make more of the ferns we lose part of the S-bend. So I think I'm probably going to have to shoot from about here and uh, maybe zoom in a little bit so we can include more of that kind of orangey yellow colour in the distant background but really emphasise the path yeah I like that another shot coming up I found a way down and onto the the loch side again. Uh, I don't think I've ever actually been here. The cave is on that little peninsula that sticks out, I remember that. But I've never actually been down here at this point of the loch. I'm standing on top of a, a large boulder at the moment, which I would have used, if I'm honest, I would have used this as um, foreground interest, but for the fact I think a lot of the the geese or ducks use it for <clears throat> an entirely different purpose and it's quite messy so I don't think it would make for a, a pleasant foreground but this this shot has got a bit of potential hasn't it again probably a square well will be a square crop but probably cutting off about here square and try and include the the point where the far shore converges with this little peninsula. Again, nice reflection. Again, using one of the boat houses here on the hard. I kind of like that as a square crop. It would actually probably work, to be brutally honest, as a 16 by 9. I promised myself I wasn't going to shoot any of the um, boat houses today, but that's just calling out for a, a shot, isn't it? So yeah, this is me, I'm now at the top of the hill, but you do actually get quite a nice shot of the S-Bend, it's actually a double S-Bend now. I'm just waiting for this fellow and his dog to, to pass, and then I'm going to grab the shot, but yeah, I like that, that's lovely. And again, you've got just a little hint of colour on this side, and just up here, there's a little hint as well, so again, Another square crop, I know I've seen it all the time, but another square crop has been pretty much central to the entire composition. Got off here, got off about here. Make sure I include some of these colourful ferns and uh, yeah, yeah, I like that.
a little path there leading down there but no I'm going to continue on yeah I think I think this is it I remember I remember this dot but there it is can you see it that is the cave of Robroy McGregor how oh, well we found it right let's get some shots taken well it's been a long long time since I've been here I'm surprised I found it again right shot coming up Taking that shot, I managed to get it with the 24 to 105 millimeter lens. I just went straight up to 24, and have included the cave, this rocky foreground, these beautiful mosses. I love these trees. These trees are just spectacular. The the way they're all overhanging the loch, and every now and again you can see there is actually just little holes in the terrain, like here behind me and uh, up there as well so but that is by far the larger of the holes and apparently that was a a favorite hiding place of uh, Rob Roy I'm doing this from memory so if I make any mistakes I'll correct it in the bottom but for anybody that does know uh, Rob Roy McGregor was uh, a bit of an outlaw we like to romanticise it, well, so Walter Scott liked to romanticise it a bit and uh, declared he was the Scottish uh, Robin Hood but essentially he was a, an outlaw and the reason he was an outlaw was apart from his uh, tendency to, to nick cattle was that um, he was a Jacobite at the time of the first Jacobite uprising back in uh, 1715 I'm going to say yeah, he came out in favour of um, James and uh, he was outlawed as a result of that. The clan name was actually um, banned, so it was illegal to, for anyone to even call themselves McGregors. So if you ever go to Rob Roy's grave, there's a, a quote on, his, uh, on the grave slab which just says McGregor despite them and because uh, he refused to, to drop the McGregor name um, it was later made legal again obviously but um, but for a long time using the name the prescribed I think is the phrase they used it was a prescribed name so you couldn't use it you couldn't refer to yourself as McGregor so yeah apparently this was one of Rob Roy's favourite hiding spots when he was being pursued by whoever was after him at that particular time whether it was the the red coats or whether it was another clan uh, I believe he also had run-ins with uh, the Marquis of Montrose and um, the Sheriff of um, Calern and I think he even had a run-in with the, his Lordship the Duke of Argyle at one point so uh, whoever was after him at that particular point this was one of his favourite hiding holes now, I'm sure I read somewhere <laughs> a long time ago that McGregor used to have some of his men stationed in this kind of natural amphitheatre and uh, obviously you're sheltered from the far side of the loch you're sheltered from the main pathway which is on the other side of the peninsula and you've got two and only two very obvious ways in and out so it was very easy to guard against unexpected uh, and unwelcome intruders. Lovely. I really like these mossy boulders and uh, 
the fallen leaves so I can see me spending a bit of time here and trying to find a couple of kind of more intimate forest uh, compositions. So this is Rob Roy's cave. Okay, right. I'm basically just stumbling my way around looking for little compositions and I kind of like this rocky foreground in this craggy old tree. This uh, remnants of an old tree and then you've obviously you've got the the path there leading down to the cave. I just liked it. I thought it was a nice uh, kind of woodland shot and a nice I'm, I'm trying to create that kind of a hidden lost vibe and uh, I think this will be quite a dark muted um, image it's a beautiful spot so basically all I'm doing I'll not talk you through every shot because they're all going to be kind of similar is I'm looking for interesting compositions using the trees ideally a cave or two if I can find one and uh, the, the beautiful orange leaves that are carpeting the floor That's it for this video, hope you enjoyed. Give us a little thumbs up if you did and uh, don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. I've got a very interesting video planned for next so you might want to hit subscribe so you don't miss it. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, bye.